Welcome back to another episode of Dominique Prunet's course on celestial navigation. My name is John Pinto. I'm a mathematician and amateur astronomer, and I'll be presenting Dominique's course. Today we're going to look at sites with the planets. So we've done the sun, and now we're moving on to the planets. The reason we're doing the planets next is because it's very similar to the sun. There's only maybe one or two extra concepts you have to learn, but they're very simple, and we'll show them to you in this episode. Dominique's complete course is, of course, um, found in his book, Celestial Navigation, and the exercise manual, Celestial Navigation Exercises. You can uh, find out where to purchase these at marinenavigationbooks.com. Also at marinenavigationbooks.com are some free resources for you, including printouts of uh, a lot of the worksheets that we use and a copy of the exercise manual in PDF form so that you can do the exercises that go along with the course, which you will need for the exercise we're going to talk about today. So planets. The planet's uh, celestial navigation principle is pretty much the same as the sun. Um, in the almanac, you will find the bright planets are listed separately uh, with their declination and GHA for each hour. Now, the bright planets are considered to be Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Uh, obviously, Mercury can be seen sometimes, but because um, it is very difficult to see, it's not included in the almanac. And of course, you won't always be able to see Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn at night or in the morning. Uh, it depends on where it is in relation to the sun. But uh, if you can see them, uh, we're going to show you how to uh, find your line of position uh, using them. So uh, when you were going to uh, correct your uh, sextant altitude, um, your HS, you're not going to be using the sun portion of the correction table. You're going to be using the stars and planets section. Okay, um, Instead of using these to correct uh, for refraction and, and et cetera, you're now going for the stars and planets. You're going to use this column here that says it's within the stars and planets section. Okay, so this is the first correction to your uh, HS. The other thing that's new is uh, because of parallax, um, there's a, an additional correction, very small, and it depends on the time of the year and, and how high your, your apparent altitude is. Um, but we're going to show you how to do that uh, very simply. And this is just another slide just explaining that this additional correction has to do with parallax. Now, parallax is going to be something we're going to talk much more about when we get to the moon because it has a much larger effect on uh, your calculations uh, than for planets. And basically what it accounts for is the fact that these are fairly close to the Earth. And so it depends on where you are on the Earth uh, to, um, to make these corrections. So the planet's uh, GHA uh, a rotation is very close to that of the sun, of 15 degrees per hour. Um, however, they, is, they are usually a little faster than the sun. So um, we're going to have to correct for that. Uh, that's called the V correction or variance correction. Um, now, Venus is a little different because most of the time it's actually slower than the sun, and we're going to... Uh, show you where you see that in the uh, in the almanac, but for most of the planets, it's going to be positive, little positive correction. And to illustrate that, um, this tape, this little diagram is included in your almanac, and this is just to show you that the uh, planets uh, Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn rotate faster than the Sun slightly and Venus um, rotates a little slower. But let's take a look at Jupiter, for example, okay? So what this table tells you is when does the planet cross due south, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, or due north, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. So when it crosses your meridian. So if you look at the sun section, basically it's a straight line, right? It's a little bit of waviness, but uh, and that's due to the um, equation of time, but for the most part, it's basically crosses uh, your meridian at noon, okay? 
But if you look at Jupiter, say, in this example, on May 10th of the year that this came from, it looks like 2002, uh, you know, on May 10th, it crossed the meridian at 1730. But basically a month later, it's crossing the meridian at 1600. So it's actually crossed the meridian quicker than the sun did um, in, that, in that time frame, right? For, for the sun to go from here to here, it was always 12 o'clock. But here it's actually getting there quick, more quickly. So whenever you see these um, lines here of uh, following the planets, you're gonna see they go in a downward direction. And that basically means the, the way that this graph is set up, that tells you that it's going faster than the sun. Now, unlike Venus, which for the most part always seems to go up, that means Venus is going slower than the sun. And you could do the same exercise like we just did with Jupiter to show you that Venus's time of crossing meridian gets slower and slower if it's in this positive direction, this upward direction. Okay, so that's just a little graphical illustration of the Jupiter and Saturn going faster, Venus and Mars, and Venus going slower. Okay, so let's do an example and walk it through to show you that this is basically just like the sun with just two little correct, uh, differences having to do with um, velocity and uh, declination. Actually, just velocity, you already do declination. Okay, so here's Mars. I'm going to take Mars as an example, 29th of January 2003. We're going to assume you've done all your corrections to your chronometer, and so you know that the time on the 29th of January was 1526.58 UTC. Um, we're going to assume you've already done your IC, your index correction uh, and dip to your uh, sextant, so now you have your apparent altitude, your HA, and before you've done any other corrections. So we'll assume you've done all that, and you've gotten 18 degrees and 28 minutes. So that's all the same as you would do for the sun. So what we want to do is show how we get HO, GHA, and declination. So how do you get HO? So we start off, uh, just like with the sun, with the main correction. We're just using a slightly different table. We're using the uh, main correction table from stars and planets, okay? So we, our HA is 18 degrees, 28 minutes. We look over here, 18 degrees, 28 minutes. All right, that's right between these two. So it's minus 2.9 degrees, 2.9 minutes, sorry. And that gives you 18 degrees, 25.1 minutes. And here's the a slight, small additional correction for parallax. So we are in January. So if we look in Mars, it says January. So between January 1 and May 2nd, and our HA is between 0 and 60, yep, it's 18 degrees, we have to add 0 0.1 minutes uh, to our calculation. So there's our correction, 0 0.1. We add it to our previous HA that we calculated after the main correction, and we get 18 degrees, 25.2 minutes. So we've got our HO for our comparison for when we uh, are going to do our line of position. And this is the only real difference, right, is you have to deal with a slightly different main correction and check to see if there's a small parallax connect correction. Okay, now let's look at GHA. Uh, actually, let's just pull all the, the information we need out of the um, almanac for 29th of January, uh, 1526.58. Okay, so we look in our table, 29th of January, at 1500 hours, we get our GHA 107 degrees, 07.4 minutes. Uh, we look at the bottom here for our V, which is a plus 0 0.8. We look, oh, just to show you, Venus, right over here, had a V of minus 0 0.5. So most of the time, Venus is going to have a minus sign in it. Every once in a while, it'll be plus, but for most dates, it'll be a, a minus sign. So just be aware of that. You do have to record whether you're using a plus or a minus V. But since we're doing Mars, it's going to be a plus. So we recorded that 0 0.8 there. Then we look at our declination for Mars. 
and it's south 21 degrees 14.6 minutes and it's d just like we would look up for the sun <clears throat> is 0 0.3 for that day and again these d values are going to be usually different than the sun's d values now again because um declination go, can go up or down you do have to scan a little bit and to see if the declination is increasing and sure enough it looks like it's increasing so our d is a plus plus 0 0.3 all right, we've now pulled all the information we need from the almanac, and now we're going to do our calculations. Okay, so for the calculation of GHA, you go into your uh, increments and decrement and corrections table, and you go to the column for the uh, uh, minute, right? And you will going to use the sun and planets column. Okay, so again, we recorded at 1500 UTC from the almanac that our Mars GHA was 107 degrees, 7.4 minutes. If we go into the uh, um, increments and corrections table for 26 minutes and 58 seconds, because it was 15, 28, 58, we pulled the information out of six degrees and 44.5 minutes. I'm gonna show you that table in a second. Then, <clears throat> because Mars appears to turn around the Earth slightly faster than the sun, there was a variance V of 0 0.8. Now, again, we had just pulled out from the table. And when we look in the increments and corrections for the 26 minute uh, section, and you look for a 0 0.8 V, it'll tell you that the uh, variance you need to calculate with is 0 0.4, basically about half, right? 28, 26 minutes, 58 seconds is about half of an hour. So it's going to be about half of a V. So that's why it's about 0 0.4. And it's always good in the back of your mind to just do a quick little estimate just to make sure that the number you're pulling out of the tables kind of makes sense and you haven't like, you know, skipped a column or whatever. So here's uh, where we got that information. This is the uh, increments and corrections table uh, for the 26 minutes and 58 uh, seconds. This is where we got the six degrees, 44.5 minutes. And here's your V or D. Right, we had 0 0.8 V, and so the correction we have to use is 0 0.4. We'll be coming back here in a second to do the D section. Okay, so putting it all together, we had our uh, value from the Olenac, got the value from the uh, 26 minutes 58 seconds column, and then we had to do the small V correction and you add it all up and you get 113 degrees, 52.3 minutes. So again, very similar to the sun, the only extra piece was handling the, uh, the little V correction. Okay, calculation for um, declination is exactly the same as for the sun. Obviously you're gonna use the declination change for that particular planet, but the actual calculation is the same. So here's our declination we pulled from the almanac we saw that it was changing plus 0 0.3 minutes per hour. And we looked up 26 minutes uh, with that D value, and we saw that it changes by 0 0.1 minutes, okay? And again, you can just look it up, and which I'll show you in a moment. Or again, if in the back of your mind, you can do, just do a little quick estimate, 26 over 60 times 0 0.3. So here's the table again, 26 minutes. V or D, the D was 0 0.3, so that means our correction should be 0 0.1. And again, when you're doing declination, you ignore the seconds. It doesn't matter what the seconds were, you only look at the minutes. So again, here's your um, little calculation from the almanac, from the small D correction, and you get south 21 degrees, 14.7 minutes. Okay, time for an exercise. So here's all the information that you need to fill out the worksheet. Um, one thing I will just note for you that this uh, time, 16 hours, 31 minutes, 38 seconds UTC, is not corrected for chronometer error. So you still have to do the chronometer error calculation, uh, starting with this as the value you took from your chronometer, but you also know that it needs correcting. So just be aware of that. You are going to be filling out this entire table to get all the way down to your um, line of position uh, values. 
because once you're done with that and you get to the bottom, you are now going to plot it as a line of position uh, on this graph, okay? And this information is, as I said, in the exercise manual uh, that you can print out from the PDF uh, and then you can plot it. And then in the back of the manual will be the answers key so you can see how well you did. So our next episode will be sites with the moon. Now, the reason we did planets first is because we wanted to get you used to looking at these V and D values um, because it's going to be, and also for par the, the parallax correction, because that's going to be very important with the moon. And really the only difference with the moon is that um, the D changes much quicker. And I'll show you, you know, how we can handle that. And also the parallax is much larger. So it's not these tiny little, you know, 0 0.1, 0.2, minute corrections, uh, you, you will see that uh, slightly different tables that we use to uh, adjust our sextant site um, to handle parallax, okay? So uh, till next time, uh, I wish you uh, clear skies. Good night.